So yes, my name is Mark Baker. I work at Canonical. I'm part of the, the, the what we grandly call the product and strategy team, but um, I work on OpenStack. I'm the OpenStack product manager there. So um, it was uh, uh, Canonical. If you don't know, it's a company behind Ubuntu. You probably heard. You probably know this. Hopefully, you know this. Who's using Ubuntu today? Good. 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 So. You may or may not have heard of Canonical. Canonical is a company that started by Mark Shuttleworth, who founded Ubuntu. It's a company behind Ubuntu. It's people that pays my salary and, and, and gets involved commercially with customers. Um, this, I liked it when I came out of the airport today and took a picture, um, because here is the product of an entrepreneurial South African that is disrupting a, uh, a, a business. And uh, it, just, it just made me smile seeing the Teslas lined up, uh, picking passengers up thinking there must be a very pissed off Mercedes salesman somewhere. Um, so, <laughs> there we go. So, um, you have to excuse the first few slides, the, the usual thing about what, what we do. But um, Ubuntu is, is used extensively in OpenStack. Is anybody who's using OpenStack with Ubuntu today? Wow, that represents a big opportunity for me, I think. <laughs> so, well, so this is, means the Netherlands is highly unusual. So despite your, your, your preference for the color orange, which we think helps us uh, Ubuntu quite a bit, um, the foundation survey, this comes from the OpenStack Foundation, who ran the survey in uh, November uh, at the Tokyo Summit, in the run-up to the Tokyo Summit. Um, the vast majority of people that are running OpenStack today are doing so on Ubuntu. Uh, and that more so, uh, you say, you look at the very large clouds, more, more of them are doing that on Ubuntu than, than, than other platforms. And say, so not our data, this comes from the foundation. So we clearly have work to do. This was the, uh, again, made me smile hearing the other presenters talking about it. Everyone talks about Uber and Netflix and these guys. So I had to, I didn't have this slide included, so I put it in especially um, for, for this. But um, these are the companies that are running large parts of their business on Ubuntu today. So. Um, some of them you would probably expect, yes, Netflix and, uh, uh, and Uber, two you know, the much used examples, and Box and Co. But also companies other that you might be a little surprised. So uh, people like uh, Comcast, for example, or NTT, or Sky in the UK, right? They are doing a great deal of work with OpenStack um, on, on Ubuntu. And there are lots of different examples there, um, you know, including technologies that, that now I'm too old to use. So, <laughs> Specifically in the OpenStack space, though, these are all companies that are using OpenStack with Ubuntu today. But uh, all of these engage commercially with Canonical, so all of these are our customers, and um, many of them in production. Some of them are actually very, very significant scale. So, uh, and if you've been to any of the OpenStack summits, I saw a couple of t-shirts and tops and things from people that have clearly been to an OpenStack summit. Um, you will have seen these guys like Best Buy, NTT, Walmart, um, Time Warner several times presenting on stage their story, right? And they have built out their production clouds um, on, on Ubuntu, many of them using Ubuntu OpenStack. <coughs> so, talking a little about um, the economics of operations, right? In traditional enterprise infrastructure, I don't have very pretty slides like some of the other presenters now because I have to create them myself. But um, <laughs> these traditional enterprise infrastructure, um, has all been about um, taking um, different technologies and engineering them vertically, so they have very sort of tight coupling between these, these, these technologies, and whether that's a database, an operating system, an application server, and um, charging a premium for those, for those enterprise-like qualities of robustness and reliability and manageability, right? Um, and that's typically priced at a premium, right? Uh, in, in the UK, they, Stella Artois have this advertising campaign called Reassuringly Expensive, right? And that's, that's kind of how traditional enterprise IT infrastructure has been, reassuringly expensive. Um, on the other side now, in the new world um, of, the, uh, uh, of many of those, those big high-tech startups, the ones that have existed in the last five years, um, you have this very low cost of operations infrastructure, right? So they're running to a completely different methodology of working, right? It's all about scale out services. It's around where redundancy, availability is built into the architecture, not into necessarily the application. And um, these infrastructure services are competing with each other to decrease price, which as an end user is a great deal, right? Anybody on Amazon today? Or Azure or EC GC? 
Google Cloud? No, right? So you're not expecting that to get more expensive other than you increasing capacity, right? Increasing the amount that you use. Um, generally, the price per VM or the price per gigabyte or, or whatever, per terabyte, will be going down. You expect it to go down. And I think that's our view of infrastructure generally. Infrastructure costs are going to go down. It's the law of infrastructure gravity, right? You as end users want the cost of your infrastructure <coughs> to decrease. And so an enterprise value proposition from Canonical that says we're going to charge a premium for this technology is not one that you're going to do you want, right? You want something where infrastructure is going to cost less than it typically does. And this is a challenge for OpenStack, right? For OpenStack to, to be successful, it has to, it's, it's price comparison. Yes, it could be over here. And as there was some comments in the audience earlier about some of the vendors and their high-priced products. Um, but it, it's actually, I think, going to be compared, certainly, if not now, in the near future, to these platforms. Right? What's the cost of delivering my infrastructure? How does it compare to, to doing it on Amazon or Azure? Of course, there are always workloads that will need to be on-premise. We know that. But this is a comparison point, right? The apples to apples comparison of doing something on-premise versus doing it in the, in the public cloud. Um, the good thing is, and this is very much our strategy, has been that having commonality across this, right? Um, Ubuntu does not play in this space, right? Certainly not officially. We're not an enterprise vendor in the traditional sense. Oracle and SAP and WebSphere and WebLogic and all those great technologies that run great on RHEL or other operating systems. These are absolutely, they, um, with a lot of respect and, uh, for those companies, um, that's not the space that we play. But absolutely in, in these spaces. And then over time, the thing that's going to deliver you a true hybrid market, marketplace, hybrid cloud, is where you can get to choose where you deploy your application based upon the needs of the business. Right? So if I can draw from a marketplace of different um, services or applications, and let's take Hadoop as an easy example. Right? I want to take my NoSQL store and I choose from that marketplace or from that, that catalog app catalog, choose I want to deploy on-premise on OpenStack, on-premise on bare metal, maybe in containers, um, or I could choose to deploy it in Amazon or Azure or Google Compute or Joint Cloud or any other number of other clouds. This is what is going to be delivering value to you, delivering value to us, whilst at the same time giving you that ever-decreasing cost of infrastructure that we know is inevitable. So, in the OpenStack market, OpenStack world, you see a lot of different projects. Anybody know all the different OpenStack projects? No, you don't. Because there are new ones starting every day now, right? Now that they have this concept of, of a big tent and core, and these are the projects that sit within the big tent, and then you have the core technologies, the six or so core technologies. It means that there is a lot of different projects that are now covered under the OpenStack banner. That's a good thing, right? Diversity and a rich ecosystem is a good thing. But it also means complexity for you as the end user. Right? If you look at how these projects stack up in terms of adoption and maturity, it's pretty clear what people, people who are running OpenStack in production view as being the projects that they're willing to, to, to run in production in an enterprise or in an organization today. And that's very much where we are focusing. We as Canonical, we as Ubuntu, focus our efforts, right? Uh, all of those big fancy logos that we provided, we're supporting clouds in production, and that means that we're focusing on the operations of that piece, on the robustness, the reliability, the bug fixing pieces in that sort of top right-hand corner. Right? And the other stuff that, that may come or may not, some of these technologies may fade, some of them may succeed, that's great. When they are get ready, then we will start to work with those two. Um, different partners. Many, um, choose your favorite, um, that we work with. And how that breaks down across the different markets. Some of them, uh, many of these people are using um, Ubuntu underneath their existing OpenStack, so they might be running Rackspace OpenStack or Morantis OpenStack. They're part of the, they're still part of the Ubuntu ecosystem, if you like, uh, or their own. And very often, some of the big companies like to write their own because they think they can do it better. Um, good luck. Uh, <laughs> others, <laughs> you see, uh, are using Ubuntu OpenStack, so they're pulling from what we call the Ubuntu Cloud Archive, pulling the packages uh, and pieces, but they will be stitching those together using Puppet or Chef or Ansible or Salt or any number of those different things. 
um, themselves, others are using what we call canonical open stack. These are exactly the same set of packages, it's just that it's built using our uh, tooling, Juju and Maz, which I'm not going to go into any detail today unless you specifically ask about it. Um, uh, and a reference architecture that we've designed there. And then other people that are using something called Bootstack, which is a fully managed service. Uh, some good, actually, uh, uh, customers here in the Netherlands that's been quite popular here, where uh, uh, Canonical and one of our partners, um, Fairbanks, for example, will help build that cloud and then manage it uh, for you, operate it for you on a daily basis for a fixed fee per server per day. That, that kind of helps crack the problem of how do I go out and hire OpenStack experts, right? Because um, everybody's trying to hire OpenStack experts and, and it's hard. So let's talk about containers. Um, <coughs> there was a mention of LXD uh, uh, earlier on, and I'll come to address that question in a minute. Um, LXC, LXC, scale out secret source. Le LXC, Linux containers, project started um, sort of mid 2000s, they're about, actually came out of IBM and then Canonical went and hired a bunch of those developers out of IBM uh, to work on that. And it has formed the basis of technology, um, container technology that's existed in many different forms. So um, uh, Google, for example, uses a ton of LXC containers. Strangely, uses them inside VMs, which is probably a point that the VM uh, chat was making, right? Um, uh, Cloud Foundry makes use of a lot of LXC Docker. Whilst it's different now, when it was conceived, it was built on using LXC containers. And all the other guys uh, heavily invested. So LXC is heavily used as a container technology. The great thing that Docker has done was get people to agree about an API, a standard API around that for delivering, delivering application containers. The next version of LXC includes LXD, LXD being the daemon. We call it a hypervisor, a, a, a container hypervisor. Um, and it uh, sits in the same way that you would expect a different other hypervisors to sit. So you can have multiple hosts running Linux kernel with the LXD, the daemon, the container hypervisor running, and then multiple containers, LXC containers today. But I'll address the Docker issue in a minute. The nice thing about LXD is that it, it has this RESTful API uh, that allows us to be able to use different interfaces to be able to manage that infrastructure. Sorry, if, I, if I'm going too fast, please tell me, but I'm, I want to try and squeeze three demos in, and I know I'm going to struggle to do that because of time. Um, so it functions much like a type one hypervisor where you have this tiny little shim layer and then lots of virtual machines running, um, such as VMware and Zen. Type two hypervisors, KVM and VirtualBox, where you install the hypervisor on top of an existing operating system and then run VM, VMs in that. Type C, this LexD, is where you share resources, right? So it's a hypervisor, but it's sharing the same kernel resources underneath with the guests that are running. And that's why with LexD, LexE containers, Docker containers, um, you can run those containers, a Linux container, doesn't matter whether it's an Ubuntu, a Red Hat CentOS, a SUSE container, on a Linux host. But you can't do the same, you can't run a Windows container on a Linux host, right? I'm sure you understand all this, but you have to use the Linux syscall interface. And even though Microsoft is apparently working up some magic, um, it doesn't happen today. <laughs> so, uh, so LexD provides machine containers. Well, what is a machine container? So, this is the, the this is a note I made for myself after the gentleman asked a question earlier on. Um, so, a machine container is, let me skip to the side, a machine container has, is it, uh, there we go, um, boot a general purpose OS. Right, so when I create a container, and I'll show you how to do this in a minute, it looks like a version of Ubuntu. It's a, almost like a cherooted environment for Linux geeks here. Right, it's a cherooted environment, I can go in, it looks just like a Linux environment, I can go in and run bash, I can uh, tail log files, I can do all of those things that I, I know and love being a Linux admin. Whereas an application container, like Docker, is a container that's designed to do, to run an application. It could just be one process, and it's finely tuned to do that. And of course, in the Docker mantra, uh, I'm sure Docker chat will uh, correct me if I get this wrong, but in that mantra, if you're SSHing into your Docker containers, you're doing them wrong, right? You shouldn't need to do that. You need to go and change your Docker file and then recreate it and do all of those things, right? And so, one of the reasons that putting OpenStack inside Docker containers is challenging, because anybody that runs OpenStack in production knows that you use SSH quite a lot, right? It's quite hard to run and maintain an OpenStack environment without SSHing, SSHing and restarting your OBS or whatever it may be, right? So um, that's the difference between them. LXC 
uh, was, the, was the primary focus for LexD initially, because that was what we, we saw the need, specifically for OpenStack, but also other scale-out technologies, to have that as a general purpose machine container. But Docker is definitely something that we're working on supporting that. So LexD for machine instances, for infrastructure as a service cloud, such as OpenStack, Docker, for those application instances, those typically more sort of pass like right? You know, deploy my, my apps in containers, I'll connect them up, orchestrate them using some fancy orchestration service such as Kubernetes or Swarm or Flocker or Dice or whatever it is, right? So Lexi is fast, um, uh, really fast, actually, to be able to start and stop containers. I'll show you this in a second. I won't read all of this out, but some of the, th the, the basic premise of this, you'll see that um, uh, we get measurable latency, um, identical performance to the bare metal, I'll demonstrate that in a second, hundreds of different containers, different types of security that you'll see for um, machine containers uh, and Docker, I know they're doing lots of stuff on that. Um, so you can read this in your own time, uh, fun reading later on, um, and the support side. So let's go and try some of this, because I think, am I doing on time? Yes, I'm getting low. So this is just running on my laptop um, locally here. Uh, you'll see, hopefully I've got to have it in the, in the buffer. <coughs> Save my poor typing. Anyone knows if you're doing this live in front of people, you can never type properly. So, um, I'm just running LexD. I'm running actually 1604 development branch on my laptop here, which has LexD natively installed. 1604 is our next release, which comes out uh, April 21st. Mark that, mark your diaries. Um, so, uh, I'm just running LexD on here to be able to run uh, some Docker containers, uh, oh sorry, LexD containers, you can see all of that, so, um, all of that, and it, oh. Type reset. There we go. They can always switch to the other. Would Murphy please leave the room? <laughs> no, we're fine, we're fine. So, um, if you do uh, LXC space show, you can see, uh, list of it. There we go. No containers running. So um, if I go and create one, and again, let's do this the easy way. No. Uh, okay. LXE create Ubuntu uh, demo. Thank you. So, in moments like these, is when you move to the slide, right? That allows you to be able to copy and paste. There we go. Because when you get the command wrong, because there's 80 people staring at you. God damn it, oh, there we go. So this is creating a, a container. It's doing that using the Ubuntu image. It happened, whatever that was, a couple of seconds now. So if I scroll back through my buffer, so I should have, now I have a, 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 an Ubuntu container running. So I can do, um, do there we go. So we can see the configuration of that. I did rehearse this earlier on, so hence it is in my buffer. And the, you see, uh, we can then go and run a command. In fact, this is, sorry, that's interesting. Um, this is actually running on ZFS, right? Anybody know and love ZFS? Yeah, right, so ZFS coming in 16.04. Um, the reason that we're shipping that with, um, with 16.04 is it makes running containers ZFS, yes, the Zetabyte file system. It makes it really, really fast, hence we were able to uh, 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 do that very, very quickly. Uh, so you can see I've got this Z pool or Z pool here running locally on my machine. Um, but anyway, let's go back to the, uh, the piece that I wanted to show you. Let's go back there. Um, I'll cut and paste it from here. I think that's going to be easier. I'm much less likely to mess it up. So if I go and... Um, Copy that. Except I'll update. Now I need to. Do, I called it something different. Why did I do that? I was stupid. Um, so running an update inside the container. So this is updating the container that I've just created. So um, 
well, it's not uh, updating, it's actually just getting a list to see if there's any updates there. I'm using the same Wi-Fi. Everyone stop using Wi-Fi, please, because it will speed the, speed the demo. Oh. Yeah, so as you can see, it's a trusty image. It's a 1404 image. Right? So I'm running a 1404 container, base container, on a 1604 um, server. <coughs> Slow, isn't it? Has anyone tried Lexi? No? Gentleman in the Juju t shirt. <laughs> Good stuff. Good, so um, then, uh, so update, and I can go and do this thing. Um, upgrade, in fact, I'll just do uh, this dash. <laughs> Upgrade. So what I'm doing is just applying updates to this container. Why do I want to do that? Because I want to then snapshot it to show you how you could snapshot a container. Then I'll do something rude to it, like break it, and then I'll restore the snapshot. And cross my fingers, that should all work happily. <coughs> Let's go and get well, actually, first I'll... Um, I can do do that, run this bench. This is quite interesting. Yeah. So what I'm doing right now is installing something called Sysbench. This bench is a benchmarking tool, just allows you very simply to be able to run some different tests. So if I all go and run this, and just to benchmark the CPU. And why am I going to do that? It's to show you the difference between running it in a container and running it natively. This takes about 25 seconds to run. ML, ML. Thank you. And that's ML, there we go. Good, people are paying attention. <laughs> no, there we go, working. If you have a look at my um, the monitor, you'll still see the CPU pegging out around 100% there, or certainly one of them. It'll rotate through them, I think. This is a fairly old laptop, so it takes a few seconds. This is the Lenovo. <laughs> so, um, but if I uh, if I go just bring up a straight terminal here, if I do, uh, uh, no. oh, see, I'm trying to guess it, and now I shall just go and run it on my. Laptop straight away, run the exact same command. Oops. <laughs> uh, thankfully, there's that, right? So you can always do that. So, previously, it took what was it? Uh, 30 seconds to run in the container. 30 seconds, point four two six. You're probably wondering what, what is the point of this? And what I'm trying to show you is that. Um, the, the, the CPU performance of running in a container versus running natively outside a container should be exactly the same, or within a few hundredths of a second, right, in terms of the CPU benchmarking. Yes, that was within seven hundredths of a second, right, to run that, which you could easily put down. So performance running in an LXD container, LXD container is about as close to native running just straight in the shell as you'll get, right? It's because it's sharing the same kernel space, the same memory space. You probably know all this anyway. <laughs> it's slower on my machine. It's, it's 
because I've got things in the background that may be polling and doing stuff, it's, it's quite possible, right? So it's not an exact science running suspense. But um, there we go. So that was the first thing um, that I wanted to show you. The other thing that we can do, if I get the right uh, piece to, to copy, will be, uh, well, not do that. I can happily do that if people want to see it afterwards. Um, yes, it will be this, right? So let's go and uh, snapshot it. Don't do this at home. <laughs> well, you can do it if you wish. But um, so I'll just go and uh, uh, you can read the command line, right? So uh, I'm just going to go and remove slash user partition from that uh, container, uh, which is generally a bad thing. <laughs> Don't do that. So then if I uh, let's see exec uh, demo dash and now dash dash bash give me um, some errors, right? Bad thing to do. So the thing I can do is, let's see, uh, restore. In fact, let me just go and copy it, because it's, oh no, it's all right. Uh, restore demo dash and L, oh, is it upgraded? And run the same thing, hooray, it works, right? So all I've done, to snapshot out the container, broken it, restored it, that happened, what? within a second, right? It's very, very quick. Partly because I'm running on ZFS, partly because it's, it's just fast anyway. Moral of the story there, run LXD and ZFS, it's fast. Finally, the other thing I wanted to show you was what's the relevance to OpenStack here? Well here, everyone recognize this? This is Horizon, it's got the open to coloring on it, but it is, for all intents and purposes, Horizon that you know and love. Right. And so, um, you can see, obviously, number of instances, number of CPUs. This is running in a, um, in a lab over in Boston, actually, so there will be a little bit of latency. But there's some things I wanted to show you. We've got a number of different uh, instances here. Yeah, no, it's not Ubuntu. That's the... market. Admin admin would be a good guess, actually, but um, no, it wasn't. So, um, so there we go. So yes, a number of instances running. You can see that they are running in different zones here, but you'll see some of this just kind of testing what's going on there. So if we go and look in the admin section, uh, hypervisors, we've got this cloud set up. We've only got one availability zone. It's relatively small. We've only got a few hosts running in it, but we have set up as a set of hypervisors, LexD. And we've written a, uh, something called Nova LexD, which is a driver, it's a Nova plugin, that allows you to be able to specify hosts within your environment that use LexD as a hypervisor, such that when you launch a workload, it will launch it in a container, as an LXD container today, in your OpenStack environment. Um, try and prove that. Again, I'll have to cross my fingers. But... Um, Oh, I need to go into the project, sorry, and get on instances here. How am I doing for time? Okay. I got thumbs up. I think I'm good for a moment. I'll, I'll get the hook in a minute. Um, so go and, go and launch an instance uh, here. You, again, you, you know and love this, so we'll just call this um, NL. Uh, let's go and choose a nice small instance, instance count. We're going to select it from an image. What image do we have? Let's do a trusty disk image, nice. Easy. I'm just going to do a network, of course. So let's kind of add that in too. See that launch. Okay. Whilst that's running, that may take a, a second to go. Um, the other thing, oh, I'm going to have a timeout here, I bet, to... Yes, I will. So 
So the other thing I want to show you, and this is a different instance um, of OpenStack, but you'll see, again, Horizon that you know and love, but at the bottom here you'll see this little tab, this little icon here called Juju. Anyone heard of Juju, other than me mentioning it earlier on? <laughs> okay, good. Um, so there are many different ways to launch applications in OpenStack, right? You can launch them from Horizon, you can use different orchestration technologies, you could use the API if you're um, tough. Um, but what we've done is, is embedded Juju into the environment here. So it allows you to be able to, if it connects, Oh, okay. Some may have some network challenges. So we'll see. So, all right, I'll bail on that because I'm out of time. I, I think near enough. But that should should have um, pulled up the Juju GUI. It's possibly because I've it uses a certificate that um, you need to uh, do. Let's try that one. But anyway, if you, I'll get it working and uh, you can come and have a look and I'll show you outside. But it shows you the Juju, Juju GUI uh, allows you to be able to deploy different applications and application architectures straight within OpenStack and straight from within, within Horizon. So anybody have any questions before I get kicked off? Yes, sir. Uh, I, saw, uh, I saw before that as a dependency for uh, the Helix D, we have Creo. It's a project for live immigration. Correct, yeah. That, that means that... And, and the new LXC container, the 2.0, will be uh, you will be able to do live migration for a container. That's correct. And that will be implemented also in the Nova LXD. So you not yet. Not yet. No, not yet. Yes. So Creo is Creo is going to be there. Creo is definitely going to be in 1604. You will be able to uh, live migrate a container. Um, it's uh, still fairly new, so um, uh, I you know wouldn't run the stock exchange on it just yet. <laughs> But, uh, but yes, absolutely. It's not in OverLexD. Actually, the, the bare capability will be in OverLexD, um, but it's not going to be exposed uh, just yet. So, so you, you, could, you could probably use it with some hacking. But, yes, but that's absolutely the goal, to be able to live migrate a container, an LXD container. Cool. Thanks. Yep. I also have a question. So earlier when you started the instance, uh, you selected an image file. Yeah. So how do you specify whether that image should be, should be uh, spun up on a KVM hypervisor versus LXD hypervisor? So that's going to be um, down to the flavor, right? Okay. Yeah. So you can have, I forget the terminology, but you can have a, a specific attribute on the flavor, right? In, the, in this case, well, it failed, so it, it, uh, I don't think it, uh, I'll try again, again just whilst we're chatting, but um, in this case, it's possibly down to um, the available resources. So if we go and look at our, our hosts, actually, only one of them has, all, all of them are maxed out with the CPU apart from one, so it should push it onto that. But yes, you can do it as a, uh, an additional attribute on the flavor. Okay, and maybe a follow-up question. Is OpenStack Nova LXD part of upstream OpenStack? It is not yet. It's when will it be? When will when it be? Uh, we are working through that right now, so hopefully this year. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Perfect. Thanks.